guys welcome back today um i wanted to bring up something that i've had this discussion with numerous people over the past couple of months um a lot of them being uh, a little intimidated about starting their own garden or feeling like if they don't have you know acres of land that um it's not possible for them and i don't think that's the case and i want to encourage you to um try and I wanted to, I came up with my three, my top three um, plants that I think everybody should try and they're good first time plants uh, for a variety of different reasons and I'll go over that a little bit. Um, but my hope is, is that you'll try them and even if you just pick one, start small. This is something that you don't want to jump into and just, you know, plow an acre of land and grow you know, as much as you possibly can. If you've never done this before, don't do that to yourself. You know, take some time, start with one thing, build upon it. Um, I highly recommend that you start with something that you actually enjoy eating. So if you don't enjoy eating carrots, don't start with carrots. Um, if you don't enjoy squash, don't start with squash. If you don't grow potatoes, if you don't eat potatoes in your house, don't start with potatoes. So start with something that you really enjoy. And here are my three that I think are really good starter plants for your home and uh, becoming a little less dependent on the grocery store. So we're gonna start at three. Number three, pepper plants. I know that sounds weird because you're not necessarily gonna eat a meal out of pepper plants, but pepper plants, especially in our part of Texas, do really, really well. They, they love the heat. Our pepper plants that we planted this spring started producing. It was 104 for months straight. They loved it. They've thrived. They've produced so much. And I think as a first time gardener or planter or anything like that, having a plant that produces is such a confidence booster. And you can use peppers for a variety of things. So you can add it to, you know, anything. You think about it. You know, you put seasoning on stuff so you could dehydrate and make your own seasoning like we talked about in the previous video. You could just add it to your soups. Um, you could you know, add it to pretty much anything. And it's so rewarding that, you know, you see all of this fruit being produced uh, consistently throughout the summer. That's just why it's number three on my list. I think that it's a very rewarding plant to start with and kind of give you that confidence booster that you need to start growing some other things. Um, all kinds of peppers do really well here. Your, you know, jalapenos, you can grow, grow those at home. Um, bell peppers do really, really well and they're very disease tolerant. So that's a really good one if you guys like bell peppers start with a bell pepper plant they do really good in containers uh, raised beds just in the ground they just they just really do really well start off with good soil and they'll they'll treat you right all summer long um, the anaheim peppers do really well here the habanero does really well here and it's actually i think the habanero is a very pretty plant so if you did it in a decorative pot on your patio or even on your front step if you're in an apartment you have a little patio you could do it there and it looks really pretty um, so those are those are you know my reasons on why that's the third one my second choice and this might surprise people is the tomato and now the tomato is a little bit pickier um, it has it's more susceptible to different diseases and bugs and funguses and stuff like that but the reason why it's number two on my list is that you can go to pretty much any garden center and you can get them already potted, already growing. Some of them already have fruit on them, so they're already starting to produce. So you literally just have to take it home and make sure it stays watered. <sighs> Hi, baby girl. All right, what are you doing? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, let's get back to work. <laughs> sorry, Oakley wanted to come say hi. Um, sorry about that. Oakley wanted to come say hi. But as I was saying, tomatoes. You can get them at any garden center. 
So they're abundant, especially in our neighborhood in Texas and Central Texas. Any garden center is gonna have tomatoes like crazy. And like I said, they even have them already potted where you can take them home. You don't have to transplant them. You don't need any other, anything. You just need to make sure that they stayed watered um, and they take up relatively low space. So you could, like I said, a nice bright window, uh, your front door, your back patio. If you're in an apartment and you have a small patio, they do really well there and it's rewarding. So you get the fruit off of there and one tomato plant will produce enough. If you wanted to, you could save them and you could make your own sauce. And I guarantee you, once you try making your own sauce and you have your own sauce, you're not going to want to buy store sauce anymore. So that'll help build your confidence and build your enthusiasm into growing some of your own food so now they do you know like I said, they're a little more susceptible to disease so you have to kind of watch that that blossom and rot um, but there are ways to treat that it's a good introductory plant though my number one plant and this is a little surprise potatoes potatoes are surprisingly really easy to grow you can grow a potato in a paper sack and uh, well Paper sack could get it messy, but definitely a burlap sack. There are actually sacks out there you can buy, but you could just, a burlap sack, any kind of pot, container, five gallon bucket. You don't need a lot of anything special. And the reward from a potato is, is threefold. So one potato plant can give you four, five, six, depending on the debris of potato, or the, yeah, breed of potato. <laughs> depending on the type of potato, can give you an abundant of food. And in Texas, especially in our part of Texas, you can almost get, in some years, you can get three harvests. So you could plant a potato, harvest it, replant immediately, and be able to harvest it again and plant and get a third harvest in one year. So, and potato is something that is very versatile. You know, if you eat potatoes, you got everything you can think of with potatoes, right? So potatoes is my number one. You can have a mound. If you have a yard, you could make a potato mound and you could grow a lot of potatoes in a small raised bed, uh, in, a, in a mound. Uh, you, could, you want to do small in any kind of container, you can grow potatoes. And those three things, because of how versatile potatoes are, the tomatoes, because of everybody, everybody that I know, tomatoes is kind of one of your first things, and then the peppers. So those are my three plants to start with, uh, to start being a little less dependent on the grocery store, and then build from there. And that's all we have to do. We have to do small steps, and you know, one thing at a time before you get to where you have 30 different plants planted, and the times, and harvesting, and which one needs, you know, what supplement and treating this and treating that, start small. Don't let it overwhelm you. Um, this is a very rewarding thing, growing your own food, and it just takes a little bit of nutrients, you know, a little bit of education, a little bit of time to get the ball rolling. But I think once you do it, you'll be really happy that you did. And um, if you wanted a bonus, um, this was Brent's, if you wanted a fourth item to start with, um, Chickens, chickens, you can get a few chickens in a small cage and the hens will start laying you eggs. You'll love it and the kids will love it. Most neighborhoods now let you have a small chicken coop in your backyard. They take up relatively small um, square footage chickens. If you wanted to go plants, you know, fruits, vegetables into raising your own animals, start with chickens. Um, they're relatively easy low maintenance, you produce eggs or meat if you really wanted to, but that's also very rewarding. So those are my top three things. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. If you have any, um, if you want to know some more details on any of those items I was talking about, let me know and we'll get to that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things, and um, we'll see you next time.